So what I figured to do is we would look a little bit just why some of us really liked the Western Maryland. And they were always, you know, very friendly to the communities um, they were in. They would, you know, put on exhibition. This is at um, uh, June of 72 in Union Bridge. Um, you know, 3799 is brand new or practically so. And it just happened to be the last locomotive that was ever delivered to Western Maryland in true Western Maryland paint. And I don't count a yellow engine with a big pussycat on the side and this little WM over the number as a Western Maryland engine. I'm sorry. I guess I'm just a grouch. You know, I look at the price tag of this thing, it was maybe $250,000 and I think, geez, you couldn't buy a pair of trucks for a locomotive today for that amount of money. And it's a similar thing up at uh, Thermont. You know, another thing that uh, kind of got us hooked on the Western Maryland is they weren't afraid to, you know, dust off a steam locomotive and run in mainline service. You know, um, this is on, they actually in September of, uh, 1970, they took this nickel plate engine of Ross Rollins and actually used it on AJ1 and AJ2 from between Hagerstown and Carmelin. Well, the weather kind of was lacking on the westbound trip. It was pretty much foggy all the way to Carmelin. Uh, but, you know, if you want to attract a crowd, Certainly a steam locomotive would do it. Um, here you are at um, Maryland Junction up in, um, in Ridgely. Um, it's more or less where that CNO engine is being worked on now. Um, and then they put it on AJ2 and brought it back. Here we are approaching Big Pool. And then a couple weeks later, they ran it a, a fan trip from Baltimore all the way out to Connellsville one day and then brought it back the next. And here we are approaching um, Han Road, I think it is there at the uh, east end of uh, Westminster. Um, they used the engine on some specials. This was, from what I understand, a special with uh, some teachers out of Baltimore City Schools they hauled up to uh, Hagerstown and back as kind of a PR thing and hopefully they would go back and uh, teach the little kiddies not to throw stones at the trains and stuff. They still put the screens on the cabooses and they even used it uh, as a helper up to uh, on a train heading north to Harrisburg. They would usually had a rear end helper of some kind. Uh, up as far as Chambersburg, they'd leave it on through Chambersburg so they could make time through there because they had grade crossings. And if the train was poking up there at three miles an hour, it tended to upset the locals. Hey, John. That's water, yeah. not gin. Hey, do you know anything about the 1968 uh, excursion <coughs> in the Shenandoah Valley? I rode behind that engine then. It was a great trip. In 68? You said 1970 that Western Maryland had it. Uh, I guess it was in the area. It went from Roanoke up to Shenandoah and back that year in 68. Yeah. No, I did not. Uh, there was no internet and I wasn't a member of any clubs at that time. And uh, I remember seeing a picture of it down at Natural Bridge, but that was well after the fact. Okay. Um, they also hosted um, um, an X Reading engine 2102 on some trips. Um, this was a ferry move that they had stopped at Sibillsville for some reason or just getting started again. Um, they had nerve enough to bring this little puddle jumper out on the main line between Cumberland and Hagerstown one time. Um, of course, it was used to poking along in the coal fields down on the Buffalo Creek and Gauley. And the, the, the hundred mile trip from Cumberland to Harrisburg and or Hagerstown may have been a little too much for it. 
but it did make it back in one piece, I think. It did make it all the way back to Cumberland, whether it was, uh, you know, shot for the rest of its uh, natural life beyond that, I don't know. Here we are at Paw Paw. That's the, you know, getting into the afternoon, late afternoon. Um, when they refurbished the X Reading 2101 for the American Freedom Train, you know, the guinea pig for testing out on the main line again was the Western Maryland. Again, we're at Sevillasville. And it came back in the form of a, with the putty tat on it. And here we are uh, pulling the grade uh, eastbound at Hoax, which is on the line between Hanover and Baltimore. And you know, this guy made it onto the Western Maryland as well. Uh, they needed some, I guess, repair work, and uh, it was done at the roundhouse in Hagerstown. Here they are, have just backed it out on the turntable for the first time. They also ran diesel fan trips. This was in 1970. It was a Baltimore chapter sponsored trip went from Cumberland out to Connellsville and back. And here we are at uh, Helmstead's Curve, just west of Cumberland. And then here we are on a return trip. It's almost lost on the top of Salisbury Vida. Um, same group in 1971, the Baltimore chapter again, uh, they have one more car on it this time, uh, sponsored a trip from um, Cumberland down to Elkins in return, which was, a wonder, again, a wonderful trip. Um, this was a trip a little later on in that year in the fall that came out of Hagerstown, and I don't know exactly what this trip was anymore. Um, mm -hmm. And she got into, um, this was 1972 again in March. Um, Western Maryland kind of inherited the maple sugar specials that had run for years on the B&O. And again, we're at Sibyllisville. And then the following year, they... Um, ran it with a couple of F units and the weather kind of looks ugly here in Ridgely where they're, you know, doing some surfing on the train. And then as it proceeded west up around Helmstetters, you're thinking, well, gee, what's that white stuff that's fallen from the sky all of a sudden? And by the time we get up to the top of the mountain, darn if it wasn't winter time. So, you know, back to the 71 trip, this was maybe a month before Amtrak. And I guess the people down there must have thought that was a pretty good deal. They hadn't seen a passenger train in years. Uh, anyhow, here we are. Uh, um, uh, going to Elkins and that's basically where we're going to spend the rest of the evening is on the Elkins line. Uh, is, um, you know, I just thought that was interesting down there. And, um, one of the things we passed on the way west out of Cumberland was the uh, junction with the Chaffee branch. Now, those of you who know Western Maryland know that this is the piece of railroad that the Shea number no. six was purchased to uh, operate. Um, of course, the big mine that that engine served was long gone by now, um, but there were a couple ranchackle little tipples that loaded uh, coal that was strip mined up there around Chaffee and Vindex. But it was reaching the end of the line. You know, Fairfax, basically that that far 
southwest point of Maryland. Um, and as you got up around Thomas, all of a sudden you're seeing all this action where they got a train, they're cutting the helper off and boy, thinking this looking mighty interesting, have to get back there again sometime, which we did. Yeah. Photo stop at uh, Thomas. And then we headed down through Blackwater Canyon. Whoops. Um, you know, coming over another hill at a place called Haddocks. Um, on the way into Elkins. And if I click the right key, and say the right cuss words. Hmm. Why suddenly? Well, my computer must like this picture. We like it too. Well, I don't mind it, but I, kind of, you know, enough's enough. Ah, huh, here we go. I guess it needed a rest. Um, like I say, Microsoft keeps telling me I need to buy a new computer. So I have the updated version of Windows. Anyhow, here we are in Elkins, uh, neat little yard there. Station's still there. Most of the yard is now a gas station. And the engine is turned and ready to go back, but we're going to stay a while. Um, as you can see from this sign, Elkins is the center of the world. Um, well, if you get down to the bottom, you'll see that there are a couple places that are kind of far flung. Another look at the yard from the, you know, bridge at the east end of town. You got the station there in the distance on the left, and your shops to the right. And there's a coal train getting ready to go to Cumberland on the uh, main track right in the foreground, and some empties are getting ready to go west next to them. Um, here we are. Now we're going to head down towards Webster Springs and get there eventually, if the computer doesn't die. We're just at the south end of Elkins. The locomotives have been idling for a while, and when you rev them up for the first time, you get that cloud of smoke. Different day, um, much different weather. Um, this is just a little bit um, west of where we were before, although on a map, it's east, but we're going west. Um, you know, the week after Christmas in 1970, uh, going up the hill towards the tunnel number one there, and then popping out of tunnel one. As you get on down, this is a cheat junction. This is actually another fan trip uh, spruce tour that they used to run, which was almost like a, a company picnic for the people down at Elkins. Um, the junction with the line to um, Durban line. Where they joined the uh, CNO Durban. Good grief. Brain dead. And it's just a layout of the junction. Now we're on down. We're not too far from the Snowshoe Ski Resort. Um, um, the country <laughs> here kind of puts you to mind of what you'd see when you used to climb the mountain before the trees grew up so much at gas um, with just pastures, no fences, uh, wide open country and sharp curves. And guardrails to 
help them negotiate the curves. And we go from one farmer's field to the next, you know, just cattle guards all he needed. We're now at Laurel Bank, uh, the big, I want to say brick building, but it's actually just, it's a frame building that's covered with uh, um, brick pattern tar paper, so to speak. Uh, was the crew bunkhouse and uh, order house, uh, you know, order station. Now they're backing up to do a little, a little bit of work in the little yard that was off the Y there. Um, at one time, there was a great deal of coal coming out of this part of the country. Um, the, the town here, and I use the town, the term town loosely, it was Hickory Lick. Uh, the, the big mine building was uh, Golden Ridge number 94, which was at one time a Bethlehem steel mine. And it still looks impressive from this distance, but when you get close, you find that it's um, basically falling down. And what you had was a little truck loader past it where they were loading some um, strip mine coal. Um, Randy Anderson, Bill Hopkins, and I went back here about 10 years ago, and there's no sign that there was ever a mine or a railroad here, and a flood had pretty much picked it cl clean, and then the trees had grown up, uh, you know, back to nature. Here we are on past the mine, backing up to where the uh, truck loader was. Now they've taken the, uh, you know, cars over to a siding on the opposite side of the river and they'll pick up empties and shove them back in. Um, heading on west then to um, Burgoo, which was the next station, you could take the easy way, which would have been to ride with the crew and they were willing to do it or you could take the hard way if you wanted to get more pictures. This obviously is the uh, hard way. Here we are arriving at Burgu and in town, such it was again, at one time a huge mine here, um, but by this time, which we're, I think we're talking 1972 or three, the coal had pretty much the coal that could be gotten without going to the poorhouse had been gotten. And you were basically down to a little bit of strip mine coal. Um, but the coal business here was basically done. Heading on west on the green, along the Greenbrier River. Lumber mill at Curtin. Uh, just outside of Webster Springs, and then arriving at Webster Springs. They've, you know, run around their train, got some more work here to do. Uh, this was a, a small loader at Webster Springs, uh, which you went up a branch to get to. They did not go to there today. We had a train there. So, you know, here's the guy, he's got a lot of work to do before he goes back at night. Um, you know, back around Elkins, going up towards um, Burgoo, not Burgoo, but uh, the town where the scenic railroad is, uh, Bealington. Um, this is just on the line there. There was a gravel plant out there that loaded uh, crushed stone. And this was their switcher. You know, engines to be serviced, work to be done in Elkins. Um, you know, in the morning, you know, here we get this guy coming into Elkins uh, from Cumberland on an overnight run. And then um, obviously a different time of the year, but you know, we got a train that's getting ready to go out of Elkins heading to Cumberland. And your helpers on the left will be cut in mid-train. There's a reason for that, which we'll get to shortly. Um, 
coming out of town, a um, little bit of country advertising there. And again, here's your helper cut in mid train. It's heading north out of Elkins towards Cumberland. Again, at Haddocks, where you come over, there's a first grade, and then there's a pretty good downhill into the uh, Cheat River Valley, and then one hell of an uphill to get to Thomas. You know, a different train, basically the same place, a little bit further, you know, a couple hundred yards further east. And likewise, pretty much the same place. Coming on down, there was a place called Moore. Nice curve. And you can see that they're coming down that grade and you know, burning the brake shoe smoke. Train order station at Parsons. Picking up orders on the fly. Um, again, fall of the year, and I keep forgetting whether this is, there was a place called Hamilton and there was a place called Hendricks. And this is one of them. But I don't know which one it is without, you know, looking at a book. It's on the slide, but I don't have my slide labels in the PowerPoint. Um, now we're reaching the top of the mountain. You went into double track at Coketon, which was a mile or so downhill or west of Thomas. And here we see why, one of the reasons at least, why they like to have the helper mid-train because they had stalled in the grade and, you know, a lot of work tying down the rear end of the train on the 3% grade. But once you did that, then the helper with just the front part of the train could get up the hill fairly easily, you know, by the station at Thomas you know, under the highway bridge at Thomas. And then once that was done, the helper would go back, tie on to the rear end of the train. And here we're coming up at Ben Bush Junction, which was between Coketon and Thomas. Um, at Thomas, you know, we were waiting for the uh, train from Elkins this guy just showed up. We later found out it had come down from Davis, which was another point where they loaded a fair amount of coal in those days. And then here's your Elkins guy coming in. Your helpers now cut off and they will head back to um, uh, Elkins. Here we are crossing uh, the bridge at Parsons. Um, there's a tannery at Parsons that still used a fireless steam locomotive. Um, Western Maryland people were generally friendly. These guys didn't really look like they were interested in having their picture taken. You know, while all that's gone up at Cumberland, you know, um, here we got an eastbound guy coming out of the uh, knob mount yard, getting ready to go through the tunnel at uh, Maryland Junction. And then here's another eastbound coal train coming basically through the south end of Cumberland and getting ready to cross the river again. Also at Cumberland, or actually Ridgely, uh, here is the westbound uh, or west local and they're ready to leave town around midday. And they will 
you know, head south, here they are at Pinto. And going on south or west at Pinto. And then once they get past the uh, paper mill at Loop, you, you know, going back into the woods um, where the sun never shines, eventually to emerge um, down around Bayard. And uh, the meet with the East local out of uh, Elkins generally occurred at Baird, although it did, you know, sometimes varied a little bit, but this was generally where the, the East and Westbound trains met, or at least some of them did. And then here, here we are heading on at Henry and, you know, at Thomas. Now, if you were adventuresome, you could go down here in the middle of the winter. Um, this trip was made in a 65 Mustang, which um, the Ford engineers apparently uh, were directed to save money and the place they saved money was on the heater. Um, Cause it was, by the time we got here, it wasn't much uh, colder here than it was inside the car, or at least didn't seem much uh, warmer. But, you know, you can see there'd been a fog overnight and the fog had frozen on the tree. It was really pretty. Shame you didn't run a train out there while this stuff was still on the bushes. Um, here we are at Parsons on a different day. This was actually a couple of days after Christmas, very, just a very short train because they hadn't run anything anywhere to collect any coal um, and crossing the Cheat River at Parsons. And, you know, they're working at, a, you know, pulling a load of wood chips out of a sawmill at uh, Hamilton, or is it Hendrickson? One of those places. You know, Christmas card seen up at the top of Thomas. And here we are coming around there. Um, on a different day, um, went to Elkins. And um, one of the great things about the Western Maryland was at Elkins at least was they would paste up in the window of the station all the call times so that you could just go there. You didn't have to bother anybody. You just look at what was pasted in the window and you'd know what trains were running. You know, if something was going down to, uh, um, Webster Springs, or you had one train. On this particular day, they had two trains called to Cumberland, um, but they were shorter trains. They didn't run them with uh, helpers. Um, so this is the first guy, again, coming around the curve at Moore, picking up orders at Parsons. You know, coming around the curve at uh, Ben Bush Junction, which is at the top of Blackwater Grade. And then this is the second guy, which had all of the <clears throat> on coal traffic, uh, lumber and wood chips mostly. And here we're up at, uh, on the first grade coming out of Elkins, just coming down the hill at, uh, um, whatever the name of this place was, which I said a couple times earlier and I've forgotten it. That's a sign you're getting to be an old fart. We're getting it more again. Haddocks is the name I was trying to think of. And down uh, Hamilton, nice spot. And you know, no coal which is unusual for down here. Um, wintry, but you know, not bad. Up at Thomas, the weather is, how can you say, going downhill a little bit. And by the time the train showed up, it had gone downhill a whole bunch. Here we are coming by um, 
the combination post office store at Wilson, which is near Bayard. Um, here's a train coming off of a branch at uh, Bayard. It may have been going up, I don't remember. Um, and, you know, our train has stopped just short of the yard at Bayard um, while things cleared up down there a little bit. Uh, engine terminal there um, where they service the power that worked the, the branch that served a coal mine and then actually went on up the hill and delivered the coal from that mine to a powerhouse for VEPCO. Here we are coming on down past the locomotives in the uh, uh, engine terminal. Here's your mine. And it's set in the middle of a horseshoe. You can just see some cars up to your right. And um, that was heading up to uh, Mount Storm. And this guy is getting ready to go on into the power plant. And he will deliver the coal and return back light. Okay, now, completely different subject. Um, and I was going to call this if I had figured out how to, um, to get the PowerPoint working in time to put some titles on there. It would have been some Black Friday deals. Now, you know, today, Black Friday, people go nuts trying to get the bargains at the the various shopping centers. And there's one right across the road from me. And I mean, a couple of years ago, um, there were no spaces in the parking lot at 3 a.m. on Friday morning after Thanksgiving. People are crazy. Um, one of the good things, maybe the only good thing to come out of COVID was at least the place wasn't as crowded as uh, this uh, last uh, Thanksgiving. At any rate, in 1975, just kind of the backstory is that a couple in June of 72, Agnes came through and washed out a good portion of the Western Maryland. Um, they finally opened the line officially on the day after Thanksgiving or Black Friday of um, 1975. And so you had a special uh, commemorative train. There's a yellow pussycat on the other end of this contest of four cheap nines. Um, I have heard that when the engines were put together down in Hagerstown that the yellow putty tat was headed east and was supposed to be the lead engine. And somehow or another, that an excuse was found to turn the engine consist before they put it on the train, whether they, you know, somebody found some quote defect unquote with the um, chassis engine, I don't know. But at any rate, I was happy to see a tra that's the trailing unit, and not the lead unit. Here we are coming around the curve uh, with the Fort Ritchie in the background approaching Highfield. And, you know, one of the old familiar places at Lance. And I see the old familiar 63, my 63 Chevy truck parked there in front of this, what had once been a store. So I know what I was chasing in that day. Um, place that Bill Hopkins found down near uh, New Windsor. Um, and you can see a little bit of the 43 back there in this picture, at least. Uh, this place, by the way, is now grown up into a jungle as far as I can see. Uh, so no point trying to go here and get to Maryland Midland. At Westminster, they had a ribbon cutting. And let's see, 
the gentleman in the front row who is holding the short piece of ribbon is the mayor of Westminster. You have, I presume, three Chessie officials standing there with him. Also of note, up on the locomotive to your left, uh, the fellow with the big camera bag and the camera is W.R. Hicks, who was um, a well-known <laughs> Maryland historian. You know, newspaper headlines, um, usual stuff. And, you know, after the ceremony, then they um, officially head on east through Westminster Um, another Black Friday back in 1971, on the Wednesday before Christmas, um, when everybody was trying to get out of town, um, Mother Nature uh, blessed the travelers with a nice snowstorm. And you had people who came up 270 and got as far as Frederick and couldn't get any further and turned around. At the time, I was working at a Montgomery Ward store in Frederick. And, you know, by the time I got off work, it was maybe 930. I mean, 270 coming south was a uh, gridlock. So, um, fortunately, the, the, the old Pontiac convertible that I was driving with snow tires didn't get stalled and you could just drive kind of um, um, you know you could get around all the stalled people on 270 so I got home all right well that Friday that Friday I wasn't scheduled to go to work until maybe one o'clock so I'm thinking well it's a crystal clear day there's snow on the ground we don't want to waste this opportunity so you headed up to talk to Mr. Worth at Highfield um, Mr. Worth was a hell of a nice guy. He loved to talk to you. He loved to have visitors. Um, one of the most reliable person so far as giving out information. So, you know, you go in there, what you got? Well, we got the Union Bridge local here. Well, no shit, I can see that. Um, and well, anything else? Well, no, nothing. Um, well, then the phone rings and he copies an order while he repeats back the order and it's, you know, extra 74, this, that, and the other, um, meet extra, uh, I think it was 64, 62 East at Fairfield. And you're thinking, oh. So then, you know, I say, well, you see, you got to know when they're going to be here. He says, well, the coal trains. Uh, is, has been out of Hagerstown for a while. Of course, he hadn't mentioned this before, but it's not by security yet. And, you know, the, the westbound isn't by Gettysburg yet. And I'm thinking, okay, so headed down to, it was a place I kind of liked just west of Fort Ritchie. And yeah, there are a lot of shadows in there, but it, I, just, I like the spot. So got the coal train coming up there, and now he's going around. You can see Fort Ritchie in the background. And then here we are arriving down at Fairfield, and really not much snow at all here. And, um, you know, they meet extra 56. Looks very nice to me. And... Uh, you know, extra 56 was getting ready to head up the mountain. And at this point in time, it was time for me to get to work. So um, at any rate, um, a morning well spent, I think. Anyhow, that's what I have to say for today.